Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and this is BXJS, a show about building stuff with JavaScript. And today I want to talk about creating native Node.js add-ons using Golang. Why Golang? Well, first of all, because it's way easier to learn it than uh, actually to learn C and C++ that are native to the Node.js uh, native add-ons, right? Uh, second of all, because uh, there always will be a time when you're writing something in Node.js and you will hit that uh, CPU bound code wall, right? So something that won't work from the JavaScript itself. And you will be at a point when you need to extend your app and make it run faster and make it more memory efficient maybe. And this is where the native add-ons really come in and help you a lot. Uh, of course, you can always learn C++ and write your native add-on in C++. But uh, that is not a trivial task. So this is why I think using Golang is a way simpler approach. Of course, you will still need to know C++ a bit because you would need to transfer the data from the JavaScript side to the um, Golang side. But today I want to show you how to build a really simple one. Uh, so we're going to be using the Black Friday um, library for Golang. This is a pretty straightforward library. It's a markdown processor. Um, very simple API, you pass in a string, you get another string back. Basically, all it does, as you would expect from a markdown library, right? So we're going to take it and we're going to convert it to a C library. So the cool thing about Golang is that you can actually compile it to a C library, and it's very easy to do. So in this case, you can see here we so this is a Golang code, if you're not familiar with Go, you can uh, learn it in probably uh, at least the syntax in one evening or so. There is nothing uh, complicated about it. It's a very straightforward language. If you've seen something like Python, for example, then uh, Go will look very familiar from the get-go. It's a great language, and especially if you are uh, working in resource-restricted environments, I would highly recommend learning it. So let's have a look at the Go code we have here. First of all, we import the Black Friday version 2 package and uh, we run it on the byte array because it takes in byte arrays for whatever reason, uh, which returns us um, another byte array, which we convert to string. And here's the bit that we basically wrap in a C code. So uh, Go has native interop with uh, C. And as you can see here, we import the C package. So what this does is two things. Uh, thing number one, it allows us to use the C um, variable types. So in this case, we use the char pointers for input and for output. This is why we convert the output from the Go string to the C string, which makes it a uh, char pointer. And the same goes for the input. So we take the char pointer and convert it to Go string before that. Uh, the second thing it does is actually allows us to build this Go file into a shared library. So I have here markdown.so, which okay, it cannot the uh, VS code cannot show it because it's a binary file, actually, but this is a shared library. And I also have the markdown h, which is a header file for C, which is automatically generated and uh, tells the C that we actually export this markdown function with exactly the signature that we shown, right. And the compilation is very simple. All you have to do to compile it, you just actually say that it's a build mode C shared and whatever the output name of your object. So it's in this case, it's markdown.so. Um, obviously, this the compilation result will differ depending on the platform you're using. Uh, there is a way to cross compile um, for different platforms in Go. But in this case, you know, I didn't bother with that. So in this case, this is actually not .so file because I'm on a Mac, it's going to be dylib, uh, that is a Mac native library, right. But it will work on Windows, Mac and Linux without any problems because Go is very good at uh, cross platforms. So once you run this compile Go, you will get this markdown so in a markdown h file which you then can import in your native module. So um, native modules under Node.js, um, wait a second, let me do this uh, native add-on. Um, so there is a very good C++ add-ons guide in an odd documentation. So if you are getting into it and you have no idea what you're doing, go ahead and look through the node docs. They are really, really good. They explain most of the things you have to know. They explain how to work with arguments, how to work specifically with functional arguments, objects, how to wrap the objects in C++ methods and so on and so forth. So basically, there is a lot of very good documentation in here, maybe not completely, but you will get the basics you need to know to work with it. There's also a pretty good tutorial about it. So um, creating Node.js add on consists of uh, three things. First of all, you need node jip. This is the thing that compiles the node uh, or node basically yeah, native add on build tool, right? 
you need to define the bindings jib file that is defines the target name source, which is in this case, when you have one file and library. So in this case, we have our markdown SO library, which is linked to the uh, source code during the build time. And then you have to define your source, obviously, right? So the source code is pretty straightforward. Uh, first of all, we include our markdown H uh, and we obviously include node uh, header because this is what you have to include. We are using a bunch of variables from V8 namespace and uh, I have one helper method that is uh, converting the um, string from the uh, JavaScript world to the char pointer actually, right? Because we have, we need to have the char pointer, but what we get from when you call the method from the uh, node.js, you actually get the specific uh, string UDF8, which is the V8 string, right? So we have to convert them between that. And that is probably the trickiest part when working uh, with, um, when trying to build the Golang based uh, Node.js native extension, right? So here's what we actually do. We get the arguments, we get the string. So this converts, this actually gets the string as a string UTF-8 value. This is a V8 type. Then we convert this uh, UTF-8 value into char, const char pointer. Then we convert the const char pointer into char pointer, which does the, which uses the const cast method uh, from the C. And then we invoke our markdown function as if it were native to C++, right? Because this is what we did. We imported, exported it as a, a shared library, which means we can just call it. Once we get the result, we convert the results again to the UTF-8 string, uh, which is the V8 uh, type and return it uh, or set it as a return value for this method. It's called just method because you know this is the example template they have in a C++ add-ons function. So I didn't bother renaming it, but actually you could probably rename it better. So then we have this init function, which actually initializes our exports. And in this case, it assigns um, export markdown, which will be assigned to our export uh, to our method. And uh, then we need the module with our function. That's about it, right? That's all we have to do. Uh, next, we need to, once we build it, we will get this uh, addon.node file, which is again binary and uh, you can already um, navigate it, but you can import it. You can actually require it using a simple require function and it will work within node. So we have this index.js that tries to require the release version. And if it fails, it tries to require the debug version. This is useful for debugging. And this is, I think, a recommended way of doing it. So once we've done that, we actually take index where we require our uh, source. So we require the index.js here, right? And we can just run the Black Friday markdown and we will actually get the results. So if I run the index.js now, you will see that it actually exports only one markdown function. This is what we did. And this is a native function here, right? So we're calling the native code. So we're, in, uh, we're not just calling the C++ code in this case, but we're also calling Golang code, which is kind of awesome. And as you can see, the result is as expected. So we have the header here and we have an... Uh, ordered list. So this is, uh, this is pretty much it. All you have to know about building it, obviously, so as I said, you know, writing Go is very straightforward. Uh, you might have some problems converting the inputs, but then again, the C Go documentation is pretty extensive. So that shouldn't be a major problem. Um, the biggest problems you will probably have is uh, trying to convert the uh, Node.js args into the required C arguments that are need to be passed to Golang, as I said. So it took me quite some time during the string to find how to do this basically, right? <laughs> because everything else was trivial, really. Um, yeah, that's basically it. That covers the basic creation of a native C++ add-on using Golang for Node.js, uh, specifically as shared libraries. You can run this code on any platform in theory, as long as you have the Golang installed and as long as you have the node JIP, which I think is cross platform as well. Uh, so this is a very cross platform and uh, flexible approach. You can uh, build pretty much anything with it, uh, starting from the simple markdown library, going all the way to probably using something like TensorFlow, because I think there are Golang bindings for TensorFlow. Um, it's I mean, it works pretty good. I used it in production a couple of times and we had a pretty great results. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask your questions in the comments or join our Discord server for that. Um, do not forget to vote on the next topics in proposals repo as usual. So you can find it other GitHub slash building XWSJS slash proposals. There are 15 issues right now. I'm going to pick one on Tuesday and live stream it on Wednesday. Thank you for watching and as usual, I see you next time.
Bye.